Okay, so we've looked at variables and inputs. We're now going to look at numerical input. Um, so nothing major here. Um, we already know how to get input from the user using prompt or input elements. Um, but the prompt or and the input elements always return a string data type. Okay, so whenever we go prompt, document or get element by ID dot value, this will always become a string. Now we learned in data types and operations that we can convert strings to numbers using the number function and numbers to strings using the string function. So here we can use the number function. And basically what's going to happen, right, is whatever goes inside of the number function will get converted to a number. So prompt returns whatever the user enters as a string. It'll take that number as a string, convert it to an actual number data type, and store it in the variable. Same here, document .gallon by ID, the input element and get its value, that will be returned as a string. We take that string and pass it right away into the number function, converts it into a number data type, which stores it in num2, which allows num1 and num2 to be numbers so I can do mathematical operations on them, right? Um, I'm working on the video lesson here, but there's some start code. I'm going to get that. So oh, I forgot to do new window. That's okay. Uh, so we're going to download the zip. We'll show in folder and we'll extract that. So I've got my F drive open here, CS10 folder, JS programming, and we'll take this unzipped folder and drag it out. Okay, go back, go back. Good. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'm gonna open this with code. All right, let's make this a little bigger. Open up our index.html and go live. Okay, so really simple. I didn't style this one at all, just centered it. Um, enter two numbers, click the calculate button. I'll talk about this in a second, how I did that. And there's the calculate button. The sum of the two numbers is this. Okay, so we're just gonna get numerical input, do a calculation on it, output the result. Um, that process, oh, where are we? If we go to the notes here, do, 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 numerical inputs. If we look at the notes, that process of the simple calculator is called an IPO algorithm. It stands for input process output. And it's a very common algorithm. Get some input from the user, process that input in some way, in this case, calculations, right? We get numbers and we're gonna calculate, do calculations with them. And then once you're done your calculations, output the result, right? So get some input from the user, do a calculation, output the result. All right, so this um, demo right here, hold on, let me get rid of this for a second. This demo right here doesn't have any JavaScript, right? So I go here, I can hit this calculate button all I want. Nothing's happening in the console. Nothing's happening in here. Calculate nothing because there's no JavaScript, okay? So I need to add that. So let's create a JavaScript file. Let's call it main.js again. And in our HTML, we got to make sure we load that. So at the end of our body, load JavaScript. If I remember later on, I'll, I'll give you an example in this video of why we want to make sure we put our JavaScript at the body, at the bottom of the body. Because that's another common mistake that students make, our programmers make. Okay, source main.js at the bottom, so it should link to this. And here's where I'm going to give a little title, simple addition, calculator. We want to have an event listener, right? We have a button there. The button has the ID calc button, awesome. Document.get element by ID, calc, oops, calc button, add an event listener that when I click it, I'm going to do my add function and we'll call it calc total. Sure, that'll be the name of my function, which I will now define over here. Function calc total. Open and close parentheses, open and close braces. That's where the function starts, that's where it ends. So in hide inside of here, this is where I want to do my input get two numbers. Then I want to process add the two numbers. Then I want to do my output, display the, the sum, right, the total. 
total sum, whatever. Okay, so that's my algorithm. Right, my function is going to do this job. It's going to get the numbers. It's going to add them together. It's going to output the result. Now, before we do that, let's play around. No, let's just do it. Um, so get the two numbers. Well, I need to store them. So I'm going to declare a variable, num1, and I'm going to assign it to be document get element by ID. My input elements that were pre-built here have IDs num1 and num2. Pretty generic, but it's a generic program. That's fine. Okay, so that's num1 dot value. Oh, that autocomplete dot value. Let num2 be assigned. This is where I should get smart actually and just control C, control V, change this to num2, change this to num2. And just be just understand like this this num2 is the ID and this num2 is a variable in JavaScript. So they are they are different, even though I'm using the same name. I think that's okay. Okay, so that's my input. Notice, I love this, um, Visual Studio Code says, hey, you declare this variable, but its value is never read. It's saying you haven't used this variable. But we'll get there. Let, let's make a new, hold on, why am I tabbing? There we go. Let total be assigned num1 plus num2. As easy as that, right? Now it's not grayed out anymore because I'm using them. I'm going to take the value in num1, right? The input element got its value stored in num1. Got the input element, got its value stored in num2. So whatever's stored in these variables, I'm going to add them together, put them to the total. I've got a little span here with some dashes. We're going to replace those dashes with the result. So the ID is result. Documents.get element by ID result. Oops. Dot inner HTML, right? Because I want to display the result. So I want to change the inner HTML of that span element to be whatever is stored inside of my total variable. And again, I know some people are like, well, couldn't I just put num1 plus num2 right here and forget this variable? Yes, we could. It's a simple program. Sometimes the calculation is more complicated and it's nicer to do the calculation separate and then put the variable here. But I just, I really want you to do it this way just to emphasize the algorithm. We're getting input, we're doing some process, we're outputting the result. Okay, so let's see if this works. I'm going to put some numbers in here, 4 plus 5, calculate the sum of which numbers is 45. I know JavaScript can do math. 4 plus 5 is 9. My problem here is what we talked about before. If I add strings together, it just concatenates or joins them together. Numbers, it does, does a good job. So this is where, remember, when I get the value, whether it's from prompt or from an input element, this is always a string. Okay, so num1 is a string, num2 is a string. We could even do that right here. Num1. Oh, hold on. Uh, type of num1. Oh, no. Oh, see, this is where it's getting confusing because num1 is the, the ID and the variable are the same. So the console thinks that num1 is this input element. And, oh, and it also doesn't recognize it because these variables are declared inside of the function. So they're local to this function, so it's hidden here. So I can't show you this in the console right now, but if I were to do a quick little right here, I could go console.log um, type of num1. And why don't I also copy and paste num1, num1 like that. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try 5 plus 4 this time. Calculate. So it's a 5, but the type of is string. Now, when you do console.log, I guess you don't see the quotations, unfortunately. But it is a string based on that type of. So we're adding those strings together. Now, this is cool, right? We can change these things. Um, and that's because in this input element, instead of type text, we did type number. And um, I know sometimes people get confused and think, well, I made it type number. How come here it's not the value isn't a number? Um, this number type just affects 
um, what type of input element it is. It gives you these little arrows that you can do, and in Chrome it stops you from typing actual letters. I can only do numbers. Okay, so it's just the input element. It still returns a string when I get its value right here. So the key thing here is that number function. Right? Remember the number function will take in a string and convert it to a number. So this right here is a string. So I'm going to cut and paste that right into here. Get rid of the extra semicolon. So the value is a string. We'll convert it right away to a number and then store it in our variable. Same thing here. Right? This value of that input element is a string. We pass it into the number function. It converts it to a number, stores it in the variable. Save that, and now hopefully JavaScript knows how to do four plus five. It is nine. Um, ba -ba -dum. Okay, so just like I mentioned here, use the number function. Make sure that's there in order to get the proper result when you are getting numerical input. Okay, I will post this video lesson here. The assignments, there's two different uh, calculators I want you to make, or if you want to make up your own too, that's fine. Um, this is going to be the, the um, practice assignments, and I'll give you a similar one for your Structured Programming 1 credit. Um, yeah, JavaScript input process output. So being able to do this assignment is, is one of the easier earlier credits where we just have to really understand getting input from the user, doing the calculations with them, and outputting the result. So get these two assignments done, and hopefully you understand input, process, and output. Okay, that's all. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Actually, I just remembered something. I still got a few minutes here. I was gonna remind. I was gonna show you quickly um, what the problem is if we load our JavaScript somewhere else if we don't do it at the end of the body. So let's put it. We we can put it in the head here. And if I go here, it gives me an error message right away. Cannot read property add event listener of null main.js line four. So main.js line four is trying to get the element of the ID calc Biden and trying to add an event listener to it. So that it can't, f the, the add event listener, what was the error message again? Null. Cannot read property add event listener of null. So it's trying to go dot add event listener on this. So this is null, calc button. But there is a calc button right here. Okay, here's the aha moment. If the script is before the button, right, the page hasn't loaded yet. So the main.js is running and it's trying to find that button, but it hasn't loaded because the button's down here. Right, if I were to put this load JavaScript right here, I would get the same error. But if I take this load JavaScript and put it after the button, it'll be fine. Okay, so that's just the key thing right there is that you want to make sure if you if you load your JavaScript at the end of the body, you make sure that you've given your web page a chance to load all of the elements so that when you run your JavaScript and the first thing it tries to do is find a button to add an event listener to, it'll be able to find that element. Okay, anyway, sorry for the fake ending there before, but I thought that was important. Hope that made sense for now, for sure now. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.